Hi, this is Father Don Planty, pastor of St. Charles Borromeo Catholic Church in Arlington, Virginia. Welcome to the St. Charles Church Talks podcast. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, we'll just have to pretend it's the 16th century and I'll have to project, right? During the Easter season, we celebrate Jesus' resurrection gifts of peace and joy, which ultimately satisfy the greatest desires of the human heart, to be happy, to be free from worry. (laughs) We are inspired by the words of sacred scripture, which teaches us how to have them. It is evening in this gospel account, and that darkness indicates also the human experience. The experience of the disciples filled with fear in the upper room speaks also of our own experience of darkness due to our attachments, temptations that we struggle with, sin, wounds, passions and demons, illnesses, and of course, death. We fear those things. We fear the enemies of our human nature, the world, the flesh, and the devil. And this fear leads us, like the apostles in the upper room, to lock ourselves in, to close in on ourselves, and not to believe that Jesus is alive, that he's there for us, that he's truly present to us. And so then we wallow in sin, and we lick our wounds, we cower in the face of demons and temptation, and we give in to our passions. And so we're not at peace. We're not happy. We're fearful. We're in darkness. Like the apostles, we fear ultimately, if not really, I mean, if not theoretically, at least practically, we fear that Jesus is dead, that he's not really there, or at least we're living like he is. You've seen the bumper stickers, right? Or you've seen the, the, the posters, N-O Jesus, N-O peace, K-N-O-W Jesus, K-N-O-W peace, right? No Jesus, no peace, no Jesus, no peace. If Jesus is not in our lives, really in our lives, if we're not really conscious of his presence in our lives, we won't know that peace and that joy for which we thirst so much. We won't be happy. If your life is full of any darkness, if your life has any fears, if you're not at peace, if you're not happy, ultimately, it's your own fault. It's a very curious line, but it's true. St. John of the Cross says, No es voluntad de Dios que el alma se turbe de nada. It is not the will of God that the soul should be troubled by anything. And then he explains that it's imperfect souls that allow themselves to be carried away by fear and trouble. Perfect souls trust in the Lord. If we're full of darkness and fear and not at peace and not happy, it's our own fault. We're focusing inordinately on ourselves, on our fallen human selves. We're allowing ourselves to experience and focus inordinately on our own weakness, our sinfulness, our imperfection. And that brings us down. And that the enemy of our human nature loves that, for us to dwell on those imperfections and that weakness and sinfulness. But with Jesus, darkness is never the end of the story. In the midst of our darkness and fears, Jesus comes to us as he did in that upper room 2,000 years ago and gives us his peace. And so peace and joy ultimately are graces. That means they're divine gifts that Jesus gives that we can't get or manufacture or make ourselves. Now, the peace and joy I'm talking about are not emotions. They're not feelings. They're not cheap sentiments, not like the world promises. They come not from created things, but from the creator, right? What the world promises is is a theoretical peace and happiness that comes from created things, 
But that's why the world has no peace. Like the old song from the 70s, you guys weren't even born yet, but looking for love in all the wrong places, right? Pleasure is not the same thing as happiness. What the world thinks brings happiness is just pleasure. But pleasure is not grace. And the peace and joy we're talking about that the risen Jesus brings is a grace. So how do we get this joy? How do we get this peace? Ultimately, peace. Ultimately, being free from any worry. Well, Augustine, St. Augustine defines peace as tranquilitas ordinis, the tranquility of order. That is having everything properly ordered. If everything is properly ordered, there is peace. And that goes for our lives also in terms of our priorities. If we have pr properly prioritize our lives, if our lives are in order in terms of what we're prioritizing, what we're putting first, then we will be at peace. And that means, duh, putting Jesus first. And we know how to put Jesus first. So I don't want to insult your intelligence by repeating things, but of course, repetitio mater studiorum, right? Repetition is the mother of learning. It's the father of boredom, but it's also the mother of learning. So how do we put Jesus first? Sacraments, sacraments, especially those two sacraments, which we can receive regularly, the sacrament of penance, as we've been offering here this evening. And of course, the most blessed sacrament, the Eucharist, not so much adoration, which is beautiful and has infinite merit, but the whole purpose, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ gave us this sacrament was so that we might receive him into ourselves by receiving him in Holy Communion. That's the purpose of the Eucharist. When we regularly go to confession, we are consoled by the grace of Jesus, his healing grace. We're filled with joy because we realize he loves us and forgives our sins and gives us the power to overcome sin going forward. And when we receive him in the most blessed sacrament, we realize as we prayerfully consider what we've received, that we are really and truly one with him. That the risen Jesus comes to us. He is alive. That's the whole point of Easter. He lives and he lives for us and with us, especially through his greatest gifts, through his greatest graces that come to us through the sacraments. But of course, the second great thing along with sacraments is word. All these are the two great gifts the Lord Jesus gives us by which he is present to us with his resurrection life word and sacrament. So along with faithfulness to celebrating and receiving the sacraments is the prayerful meditation of God's word. Again, repetition is the mother of learning. I've said it a thousand times. I'll say it probably 5,000 more times until I die, depending on how long God gives me. For no other occupation, leave aside mental prayer, which is the sustenance of the soul, as that great doctor of the church and mystic St. John of the Cross taught. For no other occupation, leave aside mental prayer, which is the sustenance of the soul. You want your soul to be sustained, to be nourished, to be filled with, to be fed by Jesus. Mental prayer is absolutely necessary. For no other occupation, leave aside mental prayer, which is the sustenance of the soul. As a spiritual director of mine used to say, if you have to go without lunch, go without lunch, but don't go without your prayer period. That is that intimate conversation, that quality time with your best friend, Jesus. And I'm not talking about rosary and I'm not talking about stations of the cross. And I'm not talking about liturgy of the hours. Those are all devotional and vocal prayers. I'm talking about heart to heart conversation, speaking to him from the heart and listening to him, especially listening to him. We're all pretty good at telling him what we want or what's going on with us. The question is, do we know how to listen and let him speak to our heart? And so be conscious of his presence and let him give us the peace and joy that we desire. And that is the key. As St. Ignatius of Loyola teaches, you know, praying according to the grace that you desire. If you desire joy, meditate a word of joy, ask for joy, and let the Lord give you that joy. If you desire peace, ask for peace and meditate a word of peace. And you will see he will not give you a stone if you ask for bread. He will be there for you and give you what you desire, but you have to be open and docile and passive and let the Lord speak to you and give to your heart what you desire. Word and sacrament. 
It's discipline. If we're going to put Jesus first, if we're going to have our priorities clear so we can experience his peace and joy, we have to have discipline. Human formation is the basis of all spiritual formation. If we don't have the basic human formation and the human skills that we need to have basic human discipline, then we're not going to have spiritual growth because that's based on discipline for being disciplined about celebrating the sacraments, being disciplined about setting aside time for prayer, being disciplined about practicing self-denial and mortification of the senses, right? Discipline is crucial. And that means being intentional and practical, making concrete choices to put Jesus first. And this is why I'm always recommending that everyone have their own rule of life. This is how often I'm going to mass other than Sunday, obviously. This is how often I'm going to confession. This is the time I'm praying and for the length of time for, for which I'm praying every day. This is how often I'm fasting and what I'm fasting from. This is where the spiritual reading I am doing. This is when I'm going on retreat. This is when I'm doing a desert day and taking a Saturday just to be alone with the Lord all day, once a month. Having a personal rule of life, which gives us the discipline to be practical and make concrete choices that help us to put Jesus first, right? Holiness doesn't happen by accident. We have to open our hearts to receive it. We have to do our part to open the doors of our hearts rather than keeping them closed. To develop a relationship with Jesus, who is our living friend, again, who lives for us and with us, means being intentional. And that, but then also that doesn't mean going through the motions either. Now, there is, some, there is something to going through the motions and keeping to your rule when you're in desolation and you just don't feel it, right? It's crucial that you stick to your rule. That said, ideally, we are doing so with our whole hearts and not just going through the motions when we're mouthing the responses at mass or when we're going to confession, it's just like we just do this every week, right? Or when we're setting aside time for prayer or rosary, that we are actually putting our heart into it and having great intentionality. Do you ever wonder why you keep committing the same sins over and over again and why you're not really happy deep down? That lack of happiness, those sins are just the symptoms. The disease is not being close enough to Jesus. If you put him first, if you open your hearts to his gifts, if you are intentional about putting him first in concrete, practical ways, you will let him be present to you. You will know him and you will have his joy and his peace. Actually, we put peace first because peace is what leads to joy. Notice that's the first thing that the risen Jesus says to his apostles. Peace be with you. And then he says it again. Peace be with you. You see, peace leads to joy because if peace is having your life properly ordered and that give, puts you and you're putting Jesus first and so you have a deep friendship with him and you're conscious of his presence with you, then you will know peace. And that is what brings you joy and true happiness. So that peace leads to joy. That proper prioritizing of our lives by putting Jesus first gives us a deep peace that leads to joy. So Jesus says, peace be with you. And the disciples then are overjoyed at hearing the Lord when he gives them that peace. And of course, those, that peace and that joy is not to be kept to ourselves. We are also sent to share what we have been given. We are all called to be missionary disciples, to allow ourselves to be discipled by the Lord and by encountering him and growing in his peace and joy, then to become missionaries and go forth into the world and share with others the good news that we ourselves have experienced and received. We should, if we really know the Lord Jesus, if we really know his peace and joy, we should feel compelled to go out with zeal and tell the others what we've experienced. Indeed, the peace and joy of Jesus are contagious. Let me humbly suggest that if you are not enthusiastically telling others about what Jesus has done for you, there is something wrong with your spiritual life. If you're not enthusiastically telling others who Jesus is, and how he's transformed your life. Are you really living life in Jesus? Are you really living life according to his spirit? Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. He is the incarnate son of God who has saved every person who is willing to accept him from sin and the ultimate consequence of sin, death. 
He promises forgiveness, healing, peace, joy, salvation, everlasting life. He is the answer to the deepest questions of every human heart. He is the only thing that satisfies, St. Thomas Aquinas says, Deus solus satiat. God alone satisfies. St. Teresa of Jesus of Avila says, Solo Dios basta. God alone is enough. Are you convinced of this in your own life? Have you experienced this in your own life? And then are you filled with zeal? And can you not almost contain yourself to want to go forth and share that good news with others? No offense to the, our brothers and sisters who are uh, Latter-day Saints, but you know, um, those uh, pimpled 16-year-old Mormons go door to door for years, you know, full of zeal, pushing what is ultimately a false religion. We who are blessed to have the fullness of the truth, how zealous are we for sharing that with other people? The Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons and the Evangelicals are always witnessing and knocking on doors and talking to people about the Lord. What are Catholics doing? My friends, the risen Jesus, living life in Jesus, living the life of the Spirit moves us to share that life with others. Because the risen Jesus, as we heard in that account from the Gospel of John, he gives them his peace. They're filled with joy. Then he breathes on them and gives them the breath of life of his Spirit. Indeed, the risen Jesus, who was walking around Jerusalem and Galilee after he rose from the dead and was seen and touched and ate with and spoke with his disciples no longer walks this earth in as much as he has ascended into heaven. He is present to us along with his father through the gift of his spirit. Jesus is risen. He lives and he lives with us and for us through his Holy Spirit. And so his peace and joy again are graces. They are fruits of the Holy Spirit. If we put Jesus first, if we live according to his Holy Spirit, then we experience the fruits of that living, which are his peace and joy, the fruits of the presence of his spirit. And we radiate that and we're zealous to share it with others. Pope Benedict XVI put it this way. One of the fundamental rules for the discernment of spirits is the following. Where joy is lacking, where humor dies, there the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, is not present either. And vice versa, joy is a sign of grace. The one who is profoundly serene, who has suffered without losing joy, that one is not far from the God of the gospel, from the Spirit of God, who is the Spirit of eternal joy. Again, my friends, Jesus lives and he lives for us and with us. The resurrection that we celebrate during this Easter season is not just the commemoration of event, an event that happened 2000 years ago. Jesus still lives for us and with us today through his Holy Spirit in us. If, if we don't close the doors of our hearts to him, but instead open the hearts to him to receive his spirit, if we live for him and with him, and only then will we know his deep and lasting peace and joy. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. And please remember to subscribe. And if you enjoyed our show, give us a rating on Apple Podcasts. May God bless you.